All right, it's uh, 9.05, a uh, good time to start. Um, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is um, Olga Makarova. I'm a research specialist uh, at the Slavic Reference Service. And together uh, today, together with my uh, colleagues, uh, Joe Lankert, Jan Adamczyk, uh, Catherine Arshcroft, and Amber Jeffers, um, we're delighted to welcome you to this iteration of the uh, Meet the National Library uh, series. Uh, Slavic Reference Service at the uh, University of Illinois at the Urbana-Champaign uh, Library is a free uh, year-round service that uh, assists with the bibliographic and reference questions in all subject areas uh, related to Russian, East European, and Eurasian studies. Additionally, we offer one-on-one -on -one bibliographic consultations, uh, duplication services, and programming. Uh, we started Meet the National Library Series in 2020 uh, to connect scholars and librarians uh, with collections, projects, and tools available at the national libraries around the world. We wanted to showcase the libraries uh, and make their work and um, projects visible and known uh, outside of their home countries. In January, to be specific, January 27, we will uh, feature the National Library of Finland. Uh, but now we're deeply honored that the National Library of Poland accepted our invitation. Uh, and today we all have this uh, unique opportunity to hear about the library, uh, its rich uh, history, uh, collections, uh, services, and databases available at the National Library of Poland, as well as um, about their... Uh, just gonna, uh, yes, um, here's uh, our agenda, as well as their uh, fascinating uh, collaboration with the Gelonian Library, uh, on the uh, digital project uh, Patrimonium. Um, a couple of things about uh, housekeeping. We ask everyone to uh, stay muted for the uh, duration of the presentation. And at the end, we'll have a, a Q&A and then you can um, unmute and um, ask questions. Uh, and now it's my pleasure to uh, introduce um, Julia Konopka Zemnirchuk, uh, Deputy Director of the National Library of Poland, uh, who will uh, talk uh, about the history of the National Library of Poland. Uh, Julia, um, stop sharing my screen and the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Olga. Good morning and good evening, everyone. It is our pleasure to present you today the National Library of Poland. Thank you to the Slavic Reference Service for inviting us and for giving us this wonderful opportunity. To begin with, I would like to show you a short clip about the National Library of Poland so you can have an impression of what it looks like. Um, it might surprise you to know that the National Library of Poland was one of the first national libraries in Europe. Next year, we will be celebrating our 275th anniversary. The original program of its activities and mission was published in 1732, and the library was opened to public in 1747. At that time, it was one of the biggest public libraries in Europe, with 400,000 volumes and more than 10,000 medieval and early modern manuscripts. 
1774, the library passed into state hands and began to fulfill the tasks of a modern library in developing collections covering the entire body of Polish literature and making those works accessible to the public. In 1780, the Polish parliament granted the library the right to receive a free legal deposit copy of every book printed in the country. After the partition of Poland, when Warsaw was invaded by Russian troops in 1794, the National Library was closed for 123 years. The collections of the library were taken as war booty to St. Petersburg, where they formed the core of the newly founded Russian Imperial Library. After Poland regained its independence in 1918, the National Library of Poland was established for the second time. During the World War II, Poland lost 70% of all its library collections, institutional and private, through war damage, willful destruction, or theft. This included parts of its most precious collections stored in the National Library of Poland, where 50,000 manuscripts and 60,000 incunabula and early printed books, print and drawing collections, maps, music scores, and many books and periodicals were burned. That loss is unequaled in the modern history of libraries. As a symbol of the destruction of the National Library by Nazis after the Warsaw Uprising, when the library was deliberately burned, we are keeping one of our most precious pieces, the extremely delicate glass urn containing the ashes of the books collected by librarians in 1944. You could see the, the urn in the clip I showed you before. Due to these two mentioned interruptions in its work and the destruction of most of the collections, first by the Russians and then by the Nazis, the library has twice had to restart its work practically from scratch. After the World War II, the National Library opened for the third time. Hopefully, the last time it will have to do so. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't have slides for this. I'm sorry. <laughs> because of this, its turbulent history, the National Library of Poland is situated today in two places. The 17th century Palace of the Commonwealth, near the Warsaw's Old Town, and the main building situated in Mokotów Park, near the city center. Our collection counts 10 million items, including 34,000 manuscripts, 183,000 incunabula and early printed books, almost 400,000 prints, drawing and photographs, 142,000 maps, and 133,000 printed music sheets. We receive almost 150,000 new items every year, most of it being the legal deposit, almost 90%. Among our most precious items, you can find medieval manuscripts, including Gesta Principium Polonorum, the oldest known medieval chronicle documenting the history of Poland from the legendary times until 1113, musical manuscripts by Med Frederick Chopin, and the archive of Czesław Miłosz, winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1980. Today, the National Library of Poland plays multiple roles at the same time. As the biggest library in Poland, it provides readers with access to its unique collections. It acts as the central body for cataloging the latest publications for libraries in Poland through a 24 hours cataloging service. And as the country's central state library, it issues recommendations to all libraries across Poland, including academic, school and public libraries. It also provides libraries with funds for the purchase of books under the National Reading Development Program. The National Library of Poland is also one of the most active Polish institutions in the field of digitization. Each year, we scan about 20 million pages and we have already digitized 3.5 million items. Majority of them is available through the digital national library polona.pl, which is one of the biggest digital libraries in Europe. Furthermore, in 2014, we launched the Digital Interlibrary Loan System Academica. All kinds of libraries, even small ones in rural areas, can join the system and allow their users to read the same books and periodicals as the national library users can in our on-site reading rooms. This is a great opportunity, especially for students living in their hometowns and villages, 
as it gives them access to scientific and academic texts, often non-available in their local libraries. To finish with, I would like to tell you about the modernization projects that we are carrying out in our building. In 2019, we launched a major project with the aim of making the Palace of the Commonwealth, please remember the 17th century palace, modern, accessible, and sustainable. This year, we also launched a project to redesign the usable space within the palace. The interiors of the palace will be restored to their former glory and the National Library of Poland's unique historical and cultural collections, currently not open, will be made accessible to the public. By 2024, at the completion of both projects, the palace will meet the requirements of modern technology and the general standards of cultural institutions, making it an important social and cultural location and a unique tourist attraction on the map of Warsaw. I can't emphasize how important these modernization projects are for us, as thanks to new solutions available today, we will not only make the palace safer, but also accessible, not to mention the satisfaction of helping to preserve one of the most beautiful palaces in Poland for future generations. But that's not all. In 2016, we launched the modernization of the Reading Room building in the National Library's main building. This began in 2015 with a competition for the new design. It was won by leading Polish architect Tomasz Konior, an expert in sound design, whose Polish National Radio Symphony Orchestra Hall in Katowice is regarded as one of the best concert venues in Poland. In 2018, the heavy work on the building began. The modernization will be completed in just two weeks. What did we achieve? We completely rebuilt the interiors of the building, adding two new spaces for new reading rooms, increasing the number of spaces for readers and space for reference volumes available on open shelves. Plus, we installed photovoltaic panels on the building's roof. We plan to open the new reading rooms to the public by the end of January, beginning of February next year. On behalf of all the library staff, it is my pleasure to invite you to pay us a visit at any time that suits you. Thank you. And Tomasz? I guess it's time for me. Yes, thank you, Yulia. Uh, I'll uh, just show up for a second, if you don't mind. And um, I'm there. Hi. And I'll try to share my screen because I do have a uh, presentation slide, presentation with slides. And uh, if uh, it's uh, properly visible, you're welcome to say, uh, Yes, it's there, and uh, I'd like to stop my video so that you don't get distracted. Yes, it's there. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yeah, let's meet. Uh, well, why don't you meet us uh, next year in the new reading rooms? I hope you can. Uh, we are active. That's uh, one of the main uh, characteristics of our library. We uh, work internationally in uh, all the above or in front of you mentioned uh, institutions. Some of them are uh, strictly European. Some of them are all over the world institutions. Uh, to boast for a second, I myself am responsible for the IFLA, International Federation of Library Association Institutions uh, Preservation and Conservation Center at the National Library of Poland. Uh, we are dealing with the uh, digital preservation and I'll say a few more words about it later. But uh, we work together with many, many more uh, institutions. And what services do we offer? Uh, first of all, one of our main goals is, uh, well, not really offer a service, but to take away from the publisher's legal deposit. 
according to the uh, law, the Act on uh, Legal Deposit, uh, we are ent entitled to two copies of all books and serials uh, and other publications which are being published in Poland, including uh, electronic publications, recorded sound and audiovisual documents. There are also some other institutions in Poland who are entitled to uh, publications in uh, not library formats. You can also see the numbers. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's difficult. I guess it's difficult to say that there is a line there because uh, first of all, or because of the pandemics uh, last year, which has definitely impacted the plans of uh, many a publisher. Anyway, uh, those copies come to our library and one of them is uh, marked as an archival copy and is kept without being uh, handed out to the readers. We deal with uh, preservation, both uh, in-house and we do services for uh, customers from outside the library. We also do uh, some help in case of natural disasters, for example, like uh, over 10 years ago, there was a flood in uh, Southern Poland and we did help in uh, saving the uh, library materials which suffered during the flood. We also deal with uh, something very important, mass decertification. Uh, you probably all know that it's uh, one of the curses of progress, the introduction of the new kind of paper, which was much cheaper than uh, the one used before in the beginning of the 19th century has caused a real uh, disaster 100, 150 years later. One of the publications of the Institute for Preservation and Conservation at our library is, uh, has been published by Elsevier, the Preservation and Protection of Library Collections, uh, centered on microbiological controls. Then there is the IFLAPAC, for digital preservation. We are serving uh, our people with uh, consultations. We do workshops um, on metadata and on technical issues in digitization. And we plan quite a few workshops coming year. I hope you will be able to find us uh, some usual places and uh, be able to attend. Well, as a matter of fact, I am uh, Santa Claus on duty coming Monday. We are having two workshops and I'll uh, show you and the links and share the links uh, later. Another service, uh, I guess it's an important one, the interlibrary loans. Uh, you can see that uh, the number of uh, loans has decreased uh, very drastically as far as domestic interlibrary loans are concerned. But it was mainly caused by the fact that uh, publications are much uh, easier to obtain in digitized format. So many microfilms are uh, digitized. Most of the microfilms are digitized and they can be served by the Academica digital loan library uh, that Julia was, uh, has already mentioned. Foreign interlibrary loans, uh, the volume did not really change in the last 15 years, but last year was uh, very difficult, but uh, well, uh, it's called the pandemics, I guess, and it caused uh, also disruption of international postal services, which caused uh, problems with the interlibrary loans. If you would like to use it, 
these are the data for the uh, interlibrary loans, the phone number dedicated to the foreign loans, probably the people answering the phone will speak English. Uh, the web page which gives more info about that, the email address. And uh, unfortunately, ye, while the domestic loans are, most of them are free of charge, we do charge for uh, international uh, loans. We are a reference library which means that we have a nice reference center. Uh, the, again, phone number and the email is uh, there for you to see. I'll share that as well later. And uh, the people there are well informed and uh, quite helpful. And then we have the reading rooms, which will be of uh, minor interest for most of you, probably, unless you come over to see the new reading rooms. And uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, and I don't know if the deputy director, Miss uh, Yulia Konopka, is uh, hearing me at the moment, but still I'll say that. Our reading rooms are experiencing a change in the number of readers. Uh, the last two years were very different because uh, our real reading rooms were closed for the renovation that uh, Yulia Konopka was speaking about in mid-2019. So I guess the, this drop of number of users is uh, quite reasonable. 2020, then the drop, further drop of number of uh, readers was caused mainly by uh, the pandemics. We did close for a few uh, months and we have limited the number of people who can uh, attend the reading rooms uh, in order to limit the possibility of uh, infection. But, uh, well, what do we do to uh, change, uh, to, 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 to serve the customers? Well, that's quite obvious, probably. We went digital to a large uh, degree. We have a very well uh, Mm, very well prepared, I would say, digital repository, which has uh, various tasks. Uh, first of all, it's archiving all the National Library of Poland digitization results. And as uh, Ms. Konopka mentioned, we had years when we had 20 million scans uh, a year. They are all safely uh, stored in our uh, digital repository, which has uh, potential of, uh, or potential, the disk space of two petabytes and uh, magnetic tape library space of three petabytes. And they're both, uh, those spaces are scalable. So when we grow, the repository grows uh, with us. Apart from archiving our digitization results, we archive files delivered by beneficiaries of various ministerial programs. Uh, some of them are uh, done uh, only for archival purposes, but others uh, go to the, they're not really open science, but they're half open science because uh, the ministry and uh, Polona digital library of the National Library of Poland, receive licenses for uh, delivering those uh, publications um, produced by uh, using the ministerial grants. Apart from that, we uh, archive the legal deposit files, the e-files, 
And the repository has a huge task of serving the presentation files. That's not archiving, but uh, serving presentation files to two uh, digital libraries of the National Library of Thought, Poloma and Academica. I'll uh, be speaking about their differences and similarities a bit later. So, uh, Polona deals with uh, the public domain materials and the materials that we are uh, given or that we buy uh, license for uh, displaying them in uh, this library. Academica, on the other hand, is a digital interlibrary loan system. It uh, is being uh, served in uh, different libraries. They have to make available a terminal on which our uh, operating system is running an operating system which connects with the internal network of the National Library of Poland and provides for a possibility of uh, serving files which are protected by copyright to one terminal at a time. And it uh, does not allow for copying the content. So that's the difference between the two libraries. They differ, therefore, in size. I'll uh, give you the numbers a bit later. Who's, uh, or not really who, but how many people are using our digital library, Polona? In 2019, uh, the monthly, average monthly number of users was uh, a little above 60,000 people. Then came the pandemics. And you can see the incredible surge in uh, March, when everyone uh, got uh, really, really uh, busy checking out Polona. The number of users uh, has fallen later, but still uh, we have uh, on the average 50% more users than uh, a year before. Then uh, Polona has its limitations, as I've already mentioned. Uh, you can see this uh, graph, which shows you the number of books published in uh, five year, uh, every five years, the big drop in uh, 1940 because of the Second World War, a slight uh, rise in 1945 because that's the year when many authors who died during the war were pronounced dead by the um, courts and really, really very little books which we can show copyright free in Polona. So we thought we should have a solution for that uh, digital dark period caused by the 70 year um, rule on uh, copyright. And we do it with, uh, unfortunately only within Poland, uh, through the Academica the interlibrary uh, loans system. They are, as I've already said, connecting, the terminals are connecting to the internal backbone of the National Library. And at this moment, there are three and a half thousand libraries which can access the network through the Academica terminal system. So the numbers. There are almost 2 million objects in uh, Polona. They are copyright free or we have a license for using them. And three and a half million objects in uh, Academica. But unfortunately with uh, uh, limited access, access limited to the libraries in Poland that have the term. You can see the map here, which is uh, very nice, not very legible. 
So I'm zooming in to show you the libraries, which are in uh, really many small places, villages and uh, small towns. Polona is uh, working on quality. We try to have the best possible quality. And uh, this is a very nicely looking page from uh, medieval uh, manuscripts. And this is uh, the same page uh, digitized uh, 10 years later. You can see the difference in color. You can see that uh, the gold is uh, better visible, but that's not all. Uh, there is also a difference in uh, resolution. So uh, this is the new scan. And this is uh, in the same scale, the scans from the previous uh, digitization, which was done at uh, much smaller resolution. Here is a detail of the page. And here is a detail of the detail. And I uh, hope that you will be prompted to see it for yourself at uh, polona.pl. Polona has uh, some more services, uh, kind of a game at typo.polona.pl, which allows you to uh, write your own text in the letters which are randomly assigned from the collections of uh, our digital library. Have a look at it. It's uh, quite nice. We do have a blog, uh, which is unfortunately mainly in Polish, or maybe not unfortunately, I guess you can, uh, many of you can uh, read Polish. We do have a technical blog at uh, the following address. And recently, we also uh, moved from uh, just scans or PDF files with uh, scans and text to audiobooks, ebooks. And during the pandemics, we have introduced digitization on demand. This is a service you can uh, ask for at the polona.pl page you uh, have to check yourself or should check yourself if the public or if a document is in our collections. I'll uh, let you see the link to our catalog later. And uh, it should be in public domain. If it's uh, not digitized yet, it's in our collections and you ask for it, uh, you will get it quite soon, or rather we'll put it in Polona and you can download it from there quite easily. Uh, this is something I should uh, rather show than just talk. And uh, I'm going to stop sharing now and I'm going to start sharing my screen again. And I'm praying that it uh, works because, uh, well, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Is it there? Can you see the other play? Yes, 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 we can. That's good. So this is uh, Polona. Uh, you can switch to the English version of the interface. And you can see all the 1,930,397 results of the search with uh, some of the old things and the new things. And you have to ask for more. And it comes up after a few seconds. The wait is always long, very long but it's there. And then you have the, uh, on the left of the page, you have the face at uh, filters. You can choose categories, authors, 
which are not that uh, handy if you filter through almost two million objects, but still it works. You can uh, check different uh, aspects of the thing. Well, most of the publishers are unknown, unfortunately. You can filter by the place of publication and language, keywords, uh, many uh, different uh, aspects of the search. You can also choose to show only the uh, objects with uh, text recognition because we do uh, OCR on many items. Of course, not on the manuscripts yet. We are just starting to do the uh, handwritten text recognition as uh, tests. But still, you have, uh, as far as I can see, over 1 million 300,000 objects uh, with uh, text. Some things are probably better, some are worse. And here you see the search box and you can do the full text search. So if I search in content, content and uh, I search, say for uh, place name in the United States. Then I'll uh, hopefully get some interesting results, 95,000 results. This uh, might be interesting for uh, those of you who do the genealogical research but also for the people interested in uh, local history. Uh, there is a short uh, context of the word that has been found, which uh, should allow you to uh, choose if you want to see more of it or just skip it as it's not interesting for you. Uh, if you do show more, then you get the precise uh, reference to the page number of the document. And uh, here you see it in a second. The network uh, is going to take a weekend off, I guess. It's an evening, Friday evening here, so... Uh, it's quite lazy, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm on the fastest possible connection, but still, it's not perfect. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be working. Uh, anyway, next time better. Let's try this one. It seems uh, smaller. Well, it seems that I'm having problem with that. So, yeah, it's there, but it's not the page I was asking for. So uh, let's just uh, skip it and try it out later. Uh, the search gives uh, some more criteria. You can search by title, by author, by uh, category, only within uh, uh, different categories, uh, search by language, uh, quite a big choice of them, and uh, date of publication. Uh, this uh, only shows the items available within Polona. If you uncheck the box, then you'll see also the results which are available only uh, in Academica Library. So, uh, apart from this and search, you also have uh, a press, 
which uh, shows uh, some uh, newspapers and magazines, which has been uh, prepared for easier uh, uh, use. This uh, allows for choosing the year of publication in the calendar and the month and issue, depending uh, whether it's uh, daily, weekly on, or monthly, you get, oops, sorry, copyright protected item. So, um, apart from that, during the pandemic, we have prepared over 600 uh, collections. That is a uh, choice of objects, depending on uh, subject or place of uh, publication or uh, person who's uh, included in their with the number of objects which are available, books and articles, uh, objects uh, by Bruno Schulz available in our library. which is quite embarrassing. Well, you know the address and uh, I think I'll uh, switch again back to my presentation. Because it's, uh, let's get back to presentation. Okay, uh, I hope you see the, my presentation now. And it's uh, time for uh, Shimon Cepish to take over. So I'll be switching myself off and uh, muting myself. Shimon, please take over. Okay, thank you. Thank you and hello. Thank you for um, inviting me. And uh, I, have, I have prepared for you a short presentation on the databases of the National Library and our bibliographies that we that we provide to um, our users. Okay, fine. I hope I hope that you can see my presentation. It says that I, as I said, uh, bibliographic data and databases at the National Library. I, uh, first of all, I, uh, I'd like to introduce myself as uh, uh, you know my name and surname, but I, um, I want to tell you that I work in the um, Bibliographic Institute. And the Bibliographic Institute is actually an institution that, 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 that supervises, let's say, the production of metadata in the National Library, but what I want to tell you about also is that not only in the National Library, um, a lot of data, first of all, a lot of data is downloaded from the National Library by other libraries um, across, the, across the country, across Poland. So we can say that we also um, provide the math data for other libraries. Um, but also, um, uh, we um, are now um, having a great project, a unique project that um, uh, is based on um, working with 
the most important, the biggest libraries in Poland to create um, a joint catalog, a joint database, a joint system, library management system in which we are now um, um, working in. So this is why I'm showing you the screen of the catalog of the National Library. This is this is the, the catalog, this is the main page of the catalog of the National Library. And I, I'm showing you actually the advanced search uh, window, not because I want to teach you how to search a, in an advanced way, um, but I want Simone, to yeah. show... Yes? Uh, I'm afraid that your presentation did not move. Um, it's not moving. Uh, it's is the it moving? first page, bibliographic data and databases. Uh -huh, okay. Um, so let's do it again. Is it moving now or not? Yes, it is. Maybe okay. try doing full page or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Present. Great. Once it's it's done, it's it's perfect. Great. So I'm showing you the the main page of the of the catalog and the advanced search, not because I want to show you how to. Uh, search in advanced way of our our database, but of our catalog. But here you can see some slots. Uh, you have a possibility to search in all bases and in the library catalog. And this is the rest we will discuss later. But the first two, um, actually, this um, this makes a question: What is the difference between search in all bases and search in the library catalog? This is kind of mysterious. Um, and um, the answer is that um, uh, we are not alone here. Actually, we uh, share this catalog as well as the whole library system with other libraries. And here we have a timeline that I'm going to show you of building a very, uh, like in the blurb, but uh, a timeline of building an extended database. Um, the whole story goes back to 2018, where when we um, implemented uh, in the National Library um, the system, the, the library management system, ALMA, and the search engine Primo, and we started building a national-wide um, uh, library network. The the um, the uniqueness of the whole uh, of the whole thing is that we now work in a cloud and uh, we um, co-catalog, let's say, in real time. And um, the next year, August 2019, um, we have three libraries uh, that joined uh, the, our network, that joined, they, they also switched to Alma and Primo and they joined our network. And um, um, apart from the Provincial Public Library in Lublin and in Kielce, we, uh, we got in our network the second largest library in Poland and the oldest library in Poland, the Agilonian Library from um, Krakow. And then the, in 2021, uh, following joinings, the Nikolaus Copernicus University Library in Turun and the Catholic University Library in um, Lublin. And um, I can tell you uh, that now we are uh, also, uh, well, we are, we are working on um, a huge enlargement of our uh, database and accepting uh, uh, far more uh, libraries. So the, the, the unique thing is that we co-catalog. I mean, we are all product producing the, uh, the bibliographic data, we produce the, um, um, the authorities together, we can edit our records because they are in the, the, same, uh, the same base, they are in the same, uh, in the same system. So um, here you can see uh, that our um, base is actually growing quite uh, significantly. Uh, I, I prepared some data uh, as of the 29th of November and the 13th of November 2021. So you can see that um, uh, we have, we, we are starting with 2,075,000 um, um, 
1,465 authorities, which in just one day uh, grew uh, like 400. And uh, the beeps, there is also quite um, uh, significant significant change in um, the bibliographic records. And you can see the whole- and, uh, I'm sorry the, to the, interrupt, but we're still uh, on the second page. Well, this is, this is, uh, that's the- And it's not full view. Um, so it's kind of small. Uh, if that's you can strange because I don't do anything. Um, just a moment. Well, this should be, Okay, now, and we have, so you can see the timeline, I guess. Mm -mm. No. no, you can't see anything, okay. So let me close everything else. Slide. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's strange that it doesn't work because it works in, in, in my Okay, computer. we see now. Okay, you see. Yeah, I think now. it moved. Okay, good. So now you can see the comparison between the the data, right? Yes. Okay, fine, good. So whenever it stops, I'm going to I'm I'm going to tell you when I um, I'm 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 uh, skipping I'm 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 moving to the next slide. Um, Okay, and um, here we have, so uh, I just wanted to make this introduction between, um, I wanted to tell you that we are not alone here. We have, um, well, we have uh, 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 2,075,465 uh, authorities, which grew for uh, like 400 in a day. And uh, the same, a, a big growth of um, a big beeps is also quite um, visible. But the number of bibliographic records of merged databases is uh, significantly uh, bigger, higher. It's all, uh, over 2 million um, BIPs that we share with um, five uh, remaining um, libraries. So I'm now switching to the next slide. It is, uh, so please do alert me if it is not moving. Um, uh, it's now bibliographies. Uh, the National Library um, ran I'm sorry, several... Uh, it didn't move. Oh, it didn't move. Well, this is, that's, that's, the, that's for sure um, the problem. And now you can see it. Yeah, now it's fine. Okay, so there is something with uh, switching the um, slides. Okay, thank you. So now I know where the problem is. So we have, we, we run several bibliographies, uh, which help us to, um, um, as a reference center for uh, other libraries in Poland and uh, outside Poland and also patrons. So the most important is uh, the official records, record of prints um, that the abbreviation is UWD that I'm going now later to show you why I'm showing you that. Uh, then we have bibliography of articles because we also catalog Apart from cataloging um, books, uh, per periodicals, um, ephemera, et cetera, et cetera, we also catalog articles. And our articles uh, database is quite uh, big. We have a very interesting uh, bibliography that is called um, Polonika Zagraniczna, the foreign Polonika. So uh, publications and documents connected with Poland or in the Polish language or connected somehow in Poland that were produced, published outside of Poland. We have bibliography of cartographic documents, audio documents, and two remaining bibliographies. Also incredibly interesting is the archive of the uh, Institut Littéraire Cultura in Maison Lafitte and uh, Polonica uh, from the 15th to 18th centuries in the uh, Roman libraries. Um, and um, here we have uh, a page showing the official record of prints. Uh, you can see uh, that since tw 2010, it is published uh, in um, PDFs. And um, here you have a link to, to that. So this is the official record of 
um, of uh, prints in Poland. And in 2020, we, um, the National Library catalog, 42,834 publications that were also published in the um, official record of prints. Um, so if you want, for example, to search for um, uh, a, a, a specified year of, of, the, uh, of the official record of prints, I'm showing you now the page of the, um, the National Library catalog, and you can just type the um, uh, just, just type the abbreviation with the following year, that, with the year that you're interested in. Actually, in the advanced search, I'm showing you the Boolean operators. They, um, they make us to uh, type uh, two lines at, at least, so uh, minimum two lines. So you have to repeat this uh, information if you are interested, or you can refer to that uh, PDF, of course. Um, then we have a bibliography of articles that is also published monthly, uh, that is published, um, sorry, um, the, the official record of prints is published weekly and the um, bibliography of articles is published monthly. So you also can search for um, interesting, uh, the article that is interesting to you in 2020, we catalog 48, 84,000, uh, 358 um, uh, articles. Um, uh, and the same as in the uh, official record of prints, you also type the abbreviation and the following year that you are interested, that you are interested in. Um, moving on, uh, if you want to refer to the foreign Polonica, we have the same abbreviate, we have a following abbreviation with the, the following year. So we have our bibliographies uh, are quite rich because in 2020, we published, we um, uh, um, catalog uh, 9,826 publications that are somehow connected with Poland, uh, which were um, published, which appeared outside of Poland. Um, Moving on, uh, we have, um, uh, I want to tell you something about the access to this uh, metadata. So the metadata produced in the National Library can be reached by, of course, our catalog Primo, uh, the protocol 3950 that are used mainly by libraries to get records directly from the library database. We have a service, a metadata hub, uh, data.bn.org.pl. And you can retrieve um, records via API. We have Mac database, database, and we have also external databases such as VF, OCLC, et cetera, that we also publish our records uh, to. Um, we export weekly um, um, uh, the data to other libraries. Once a week, uh, we uh, export authority records that are constantly being modified, deleted, merged, uh, created, etc. So um, we, um, uh, we uh, publish those changes on the official website of the National Library so that they can be downloaded and used by other Polish libraries. And once a month, uh, we also um, uh, publish the um, authority records uh, to uh, the F. Um, once a month, we publish BIPs uh, to um, OCLC uh, WordCat. Um, if it comes to the service data being or PL, once a day, um, the web service uh, data gets bibliographic authority and item records. And in the service, there is a possibility to download whole databases. So you can download all authorities, all items, all BIPs, et cetera as well as the possibility to browse BIPs, authorities, and item records according to selected criteria. And uh, I just want to show you, this is the, this is the, 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 the page of the, the metadata hub data BN org PL, where you can uh, create, um, create um, uh, 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 your queries um, in the um, um, pretty 
uh, similar way as you can do that on our with our online catalog, but the data is far more, let's say, detailed. So this is this is for 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 someone who wants to 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 have a, a very detailed uh, a query. And uh, last but not least, we have also, as I told you, uh, the Mac database, uh, which is uh, pretty old but very old, but very informative. As especially when it comes to um, the um, authorities uh, that are up to, uh, updated uh, there. Uh, and uh, you can also see those um, authorities in the, um, in the, in the way uh, as the index. So uh, it is also very, uh, very, very helpful. So this is the uh, end of my uh, bumpy, uh, rather bumpy presentation. Sorry for technical uh, technical problems, uh, but hopefully <laughs> I, I was able to present you the content, which is the most important thing. So thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, I guess it's uh, time for me to get back to my bumpy ride. Um, okay, so that's me. And I hope uh, that uh, in a second you see something much better than me, uh, namely the Polona typo, which seems to work. So I'll just leave this line and uh, try to show you how it works. And uh, this is the uh, way of uh, writing on the oops fly in old odd letters oops too many letters do you see it yes i guess you do so I'm stopping my video and trying to get back to the presentation itself. And, uh, sorry. Yeah, it's bumpy, definitely. Uh, mm. Am I there? No, I'm there. Okay. Well, let's back to the let's get back to the pandemics. Um, I hope you see my uh, screen. Uh, 2020 brought us the restrictions on the number of users in the reading rooms, the uh, lockdowns even the quarantine of uh, library books, which has, uh, yeah, it was a difficult time, but it uh, allowed us to move faster into the digital, digital realm. So in 2020, it was possible to extend a government program, uh, which was called National Reading Development Program. And it was possible to include remote solutions. And the National Library of Poland uh, was funded in such a way that we could prepare 1200 ebooks, which are all available in uh, Polona Digital Library. We've supervised preparation of 70 audiobooks, which are mostly uh, required reading for schools. And we have been able to prepare 660 collections of different kinds. They are at the Polona website in the collections uh, tab. And uh, well, they are uh, of service for teachers, pupils, and uh, other interested public. We have also been able to buy licenses from uh, Polish writers and poets. Well, poets are writers, so prose and poetry writers. 
and uh, that has enabled us to uh, deliver many works of the writers who would otherwise be totally uh, unavailable legally on the internet. The next edition of the National Reading Development Program, which uh, will have a budget of 233 million euro, out of which 59% is state financing, uh, the rest is contribution of the beneficiaries. And the National Library is uh, taking care of the priority, which is called improving the offer of public libraries. It is divided into two tasks, one of which is uh, serving as a distribution center somewhat of the funds for the libraries which apply to us and we are either approving their, uh, their application for grants or not approving. But if we approve it, they are getting money to purchase printed books, or remote access to various forms of uh, publications like ebooks, audiobooks, and synchro books. And it's the libraries who, which decide what to buy and uh, in what formats. The other uh, priority uh, part task in that priority is uh, something that Shimon was. Uh, already talking about the integrated library resources management system, which by 2025 uh, will allow 500 of the public, mold, yeah, public libraries to join the system. The links to the catalog is uh, already there in uh, chat. And now uh, for some uh, past achievements. Uh, one of our projects was the Patrimonium project, which is about heritage. And uh, it was a joint project of the two biggest libraries in, po uh, in Poland. We took the leading role, of course, and the Jagiellonian Library was uh, second to us. As you can uh, already see, over a million objects uh, were digitized and put online in the polona.pl uh, website. Two thirds of them uh, came from the National Library, 370,000 from the Jagiellonian Library, which is uh, altogether makes up a huge part of our uh, written heritage. Uh, it's included uh, various kinds of materials, almost all possible categories, from uh, music scores, the, some first editions of important books, uh, one of the, uh, the the oldest parchment manuscripts held by the National Library of Poland and many, many more. The financing came from the European Union and the Ministry of Culture and National Heritage. And one of the most important goals was to uh, provide us with the very best possible equipment to digitize. And we have purchased uh, 27 large format scanners. Uh, they, most of them were using uh, very high quality uh, digital cameras because our tests have uh, proved that the digital cameras are superior in quality to the scanners, especially those with moving heads. So we have in that way became, become the largest digitization center in Poland. And we can follow up the patrimonium project with uh, another one which takes care of the uh, important uh, and different part of our cultural written heritage. 
Uh, within this project, we have uh, digitized uh, all the medieval manuscripts from our collections, many uh, early modern manuscripts, uh, early printed books, musical scores, maps, prints, photographs, drawings, and uh, books, periodicals, and ephemera from the 19th and first half of the 20th century, all materials were uh, in the public domain. That was uh, the rule. So um, this is uh, the end of this part. I'll just uh, let you see this one for a second because I, um, I really can't wait till Monday to see the two really world-class experts uh, joining us from uh, Bern, Switzerland and Rochester, New York to talk about uh, setting up a mass digitization project and uh, measuring and ensuring quality of digitization. Coming Wednesday, our expert, well, that makes him a world-class expert, will talk about uh, doing quality in the mass digitization projects. So uh, this is all from me now. So I stop sharing my screen. I turn on my video. I hope I'm there. Thank you very much. I hope that Julia and Shimon are there as well. And uh, I hope I am. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, okay. Thomas and you and Simon for uh, informative presentation. Um, um, we have uh, time for questions. Uh, so if um, anyone have a question, um, you can type it in chat or just um, raise your hand and um, um, I'll, uh, unmute you and you can ask this way. I guess it's a, a lot of information to digest, uh, so people might need some time to uh, form their questions. We do have some questions that were um, uh, already submitted, so maybe I can start with some of them, uh, and then if we have some questions from audience, then we'll take them. Uh, so one of the questions is, um, besides uh, attending international book fairs and uh, conferences, uh, what do you think is the best way for North American Slavic librarians uh, to stay updated on the uh, latest developments in uh, Polish librarianship? Is there a print or online publication that you can uh, recommend? Uh, yes. Actually, I uh, was thinking about including that, but I didn't, which is a shame. But I'm uh, just at this moment putting a link into the chat so you can uh, see it for yourself. It's, uh, uh, it's a magazine, which uh, a journal. Uh, a peer-reviewed uh, journal, which is published by the National Library of uh, Poland. And it's uh, available online. You can also buy print issues if you can uh, pass our bureaucratic uh, issues with uh, selling things in a foreign currency. But uh, you can download it uh, for free from the link that I have just uh, put on. Uh, from uh, our point of view, I think it's uh, important and uh, a good entry point, I'd say. Thank you. Uh, we do have another question in chat from Emily. Uh, what is the oldest item that was scanned? Anything earlier than the medieval period? Uh, that's a good one and uh, oh my god what was it uh i'm just checking because polona started uh, working for me it's not very fast which i totally don't understand but uh, it seems to be working and 
it was not uh, older than medieval, definitely, because we only have a few items which are from the third century. Uh, and they are, well, they are very important, very interesting. There are actually uh, some text, uh, the tax uh, uh, documents from the third century, uh, our era. And uh, at this moment, I have reached the oldest item, which was uh, scanned in the Patrimonium uh, uh, projects and this is uh, unfortunately a bit destroyed uh, a bible from uh, what was it uh, 8th uh, century i've put a link of course in the chat so you can uh, have a look at it uh, yeah, this is what uh, Julia has mentioned, that uh, we have been uh, very unlucky to be located uh, between two powers, which from time to time decided to invade us. And from time to time, they uh, decided to uh, destroy our library collections. So, um, yeah, the, the, the losses during the partitions and during the uh, Second World War were uh, really, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm lost for words uh, to describe that. Uh, Julia has said, uh, told you about an urn which is being kept at the uh, National Library, which contains the ashes of the books that were burned during the uh, Second World War by the German forces after the Warsaw Uprising. And uh, I am uh, getting, well, I'm, yeah, getting links is much easier than showing you the things in Poloma. I don't know. Maybe Polona doesn't like being uh, shown in Zoom. So uh, another link went to the uh, uh, to the to the uh, chat, and in one of the um, photographs, you can actually see uh, some letters which were uh, preserved from one of the books that was burned. I'm going to put a, uh, a link. I did put a link and now I'm going to put the uh, picture itself because it uh, seems to work much better than, uh, yeah, I think you, 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 you have it. Uh, you can, uh, in this picture, you can see the letters and I've asked my colleagues from the manuscripts department if they could, uh, identify the book itself but they couldn't so uh there is a high quality image of it in the polona library there is the link so all uh, medievalists you're welcome to try to decipher the writing and uh, find out which book that was thank you <clears throat> Uh, another question um, that we received, uh, in addition to the budget received from the Ministry of Culture, uh, has the National Library of Poland received funding from other sources? Um, yes, yeah, so the government funding is the greater part of our budget, but we are lucky enough to receive some private uh, donations. But to be honest, is less than 10%, I think. And these donations mostly cover our acquisitions. Thank you. Uh, trying to, uh, <clears throat> some of the questions I think were answered uh, during your presentation. So, um, um, 
I don't think I, <clears throat> well, this one is, um, all right. So um, uh, there is another uh, question in chat. Do people make donations? Uh, does anyone ever find something like, uh, say in their uh, parents' attic? Um, yes, it happens and actually quite a lot. Um, and we are happy to receive all these donations uh, because as Thomas said, and I just said before, we lost a lot of our collection. So we're, especially from the books from the First World War and the Second World War and the time between, we, we miss a lot of them. So it happens. And if not through donations, we try to buy them at the auctions. Thank you. <clears throat> right, there's uh, another question uh, about uh, cooperation. As a German library based in Munich, uh, we would like to integrate the catalog of the National Library of Poland, uh, Polish National Bibliographia um, catalog um, uh, in our search instrument. Uh, is, uh, is it possible? Since I said something about a catalog, maybe I can <coughs> answer to this um, to this question. Well, we um, actually we didn't have this kind of cooperation at our in our um, experience. Um, so we rather cooperate with the um, uh, the libraries uh, located outside of the national library um, um, that are not uh, part of the, the national library rather as as the reference point from our catalog not on the other on the other uh on the other way so of course the um the giving any binding answer is not uh, possible at this at this moment uh well from the technical point of view it it should be actually i can't deny that but i um it's not the binding answer um in in um it, it should be rather a formal kind of um, request uh, of cooperation. Thank you. <clears throat> we do have some other uh, thank you messages in chat. Uh, and uh, um, somewhat uh, specific question that we received. Uh, I would like to translate current Polish short stories into English. How do you ask for author and Polish publisher permissions? I think I might give a very general and not satisfying answer to that. Uh, it's uh, most of the time it's the publisher of the original work who has the rights. If not for translation, then uh, for the original. And if you want to do the translation, you have to contact the publisher. And if they don't have the rights, they will put you in contact with the author. That's, I think, how it works. Thank you. All right. Uh, does the National Library of Poland work with any museums, maybe uh, sharing digital files or sharing catalogs? Um, yeah, again. Which, which, uh, well, go on, go on, please. Yeah, the, uh, there is a uh, project uh, starting in Poland, which is uh, not uh, uh, finalized yet, but uh, I guess it will be uh, available at the website, which I'm uh, I will put uh, on the chat in a second. It's called Kronika, and it's uh, a repository of uh, not only uh, of well, in the uh, they hope to have cooperation of all Polish uh, cultural institutions. As they, uh, as a repository, they can provide for archival activities for free, not really for free, but uh, financed by the government uh, funds. 
uh, in a safe way uh, because they are going to be uh, well funded. So they will be able to provide archiving of digital files for a uh, long time. Institutions uh, such as libraries, uh, museums and archives are welcome to this project. Uh, it will be active, as I uh, think to remember, within coming three months. Uh, you can uh, see the web page already there. It's in Polish, so limited. I don't know if they have an English version of that. Uh, we have just started uh, migration of our data to their uh, repository. Well, not really migration, but sharing, uh, because uh, our repository is going to hold our data still. But we are going to share all our data with this uh, project. So, uh, well, we do. Hmm. Solineum Library. I don't know if they are. I think I saw oh, someone from actually... this library uh, on the presentation of Chronica. Okay, I'm shutting. Ah, the, the question was about the, the Chronica. Um, I, I thought that the question was about this enlargement of our uh, network because the uh, because the, the 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 question was also referring to uh, sharing catalogs and as I as I said we we do have uh, shared we we do have we do contain catalogs of the literary institute in Maison Lafitte in Paris and but we don't own those items we only give a reference bibliography to them and we also uh, contain in our catalog a reference data um, to um, prints uh, documents relating with Poland that are stored in the Roman libraries. According to Oslino, uh, we, we are um, ahead of having a competition for the libraries uh, to, in, to include them into the um, into the um, um, the project that, that, that Tomasz said about um, just a minute ago, so uh, we don't know yet. So if the question about Ossolim was, was about the cooperative project, I, I said something about with Tomasz, we don't know. If it was about Kronika, I can't tell you anything about that. And if I may add to, to that question, we also work with museums in the field of lending our items to exhibitions. So anytime anyone wants to show something from our vault, they, they try to lend and if it's possible, we do that. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. I think we're uh, running out of time. Um, no, don't, 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 don't shut us out. Uh, <laughs> there is another link in the chat, of course, by me again. Uh, that's a project we are doing with uh, libraries. Any library can join the Polona Digital Library, any library in Poland. Don't overdo it. Any library in Poland can join the uh, Polona in Cloud Digital Library. Uh, they will be archiving their digital files and will be showing them, presenting them in the Polona website. So uh, I guess a Polish language library from abroad might also qualify. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that has to be checked. Anyway, the, this is again in Polish because it's mainly for the Polish. At the moment, we are, do cooperate only with the Polish libraries, not really with museums, but uh, if an institution has a library, then it's a library and it can uh, take part in uh, Polona for uh, libraries in the cloud project. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I guess we do have uh, time for one last question. Uh, if you know uh, an estimate, how many employees the National Library has? So right now, I think we have more than 700 employees, uh, both um, 
from the bibliographics uh, and from the administrative. All right. Um, do, do you think, Thomas, we can uh, call it a day now? <laughs> <laughs> or okay, would you like sure. to continue? <laughs> no, sorry, no, no, maybe no. I will add on one thing as I saw a question about and further information about giving donations on the library's main website. So we have an information. Uh, now it's only in Polish, but we will make sure it will be also on the English website. I will, I will put the link in a minute. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we think everyone is free to go now. I mean, it's dark outside, no sun anymore. So whenever you're ready, whenever you have no more questions, thank you very much for uh, letting us to do some talking about our library. And uh, I'm sorry for my, my Polona not working properly, but the links work. Yes, yes, and it's a, it's a beautiful project and very useful. Yes, we would like to thank you for your uh, time and for this uh, very informative and interesting uh, presentations and for um, accepting our invitation. Um, and uh, yes, have a good evening and a nice restful weekend if possible. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so we, we hope to be in touch. And thank you, uh, everyone. Have a great day. I just wanted thank to you. thank again. Hand up. And make sure ah. to visit us next year or so on. Sure. You too. Please uh, visit us in <laughs> Illinois. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye.